Learning a programming language is one thing. Thinking like a programmer, that's something else. Let's talk about it. The number one skill you need to be able to think like a programmer is the ability to break down a problem into smaller chunks. If you have a big problem, let's say you want to create a to-do list app, you have to think what needs to be done in order to get the bigger problem solved, right? You have to have certain to-do items, you need to be able to delete them, add them, and then within each of those chunks, let's say adding a to-do list, item what do you need to do within that yeah you need to have a title so you need to have some sort of form that you fill out and then you have to have something that takes the information from the form and puts it into a data structure of some sort and then you need to um, be able to fetch things out of that data structure to display them back on the website etc etc and then you have to go into each of those individual things and then break that down into even smaller problems okay how is the form going to look? What names are you going to use for each field? Okay, every single thing can be broken down into smaller and smaller problems until really your code should kind of come out at you <laughs> from your notes, right? So this is the idea. Every single problem can be broken down into smaller and smaller chunks. That is the number one thing and what this all ends up coming back to. The second big thing to remember to think like a programmer is to think in terms of inputs and outputs. So we spoke about how to break down problems or the fact that every problem needs to be broken down. But then we need to start thinking, OK, what exactly is a step? What does a single step look like? And usually in JavaScript, for example, that comes in the form of functions, right? what goes into the function, for example, a parameter or an argument, and what comes out, i.e. the return. Now, this idea of inputs and outputs drives functional programming, and it is really the key to how to solve each chunk or each step of your problem. Now, when you're thinking about inputs and outputs, it's important to think about data types. For example, if you're submitting a form on a web page, it will almost certainly come in, in as a data type of a string. And you then need to work with that, for example, if you need to transform it into a number. So you have to think about that sort of thing. You, could, you might be working with dates or times or other data forms that you need to work with. So that's the other thing that is really important with this idea of inputs and outputs. Um, sometimes you will need to write your own functions in order to transform something into the data type that you need. So this is part of the skill of thinking like a programmer. Yeah, not only thinking about what is going in and what is coming out, but also what data type is coming in. What do I need to do to it to bring it out? Now, part of this is also the concept of consistency. Now, what does this mean? This means you want to make your data as consistent as possible to avoid all the edge cases that could happen. For example, I've spoken before about the trim method in JavaScript that removes white space from the beginning and end of a string. Now, the wide majority of the time, you're not going to need to use trim, but there might be cases where people just randomly add this space at the end of a sentence or at the end of their name, for example, in a form. So this trim makes things as consistent as possible. What you want to do as a programmer is to eliminate or reduce risk of contamination of your program. So you need to create your program, but then also reduce the risk of something going wrong along the way. Another example is turning everything into lowercase. It helps avoid problems that come up from capital letters um, interfering with equals or comparisons or something along those lines. So that's the other thing to consider. The last thing is the concept of the flow of information. Now, sometimes this is uh, described as the call stack. You can think of it in terms of the call stack. There are some great videos out there about how the call stack works. Um, however, if, you, if the idea of a stack is a little bit intimidating to you at this stage, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Basically, all people are saying when they're talking about understanding the call stack is understanding the, the way in which data flows yeah, what functions happen first, what happens next, what happens then, where does this piece of information go? Um, so these inputs and outputs, right, they usually link up to each other. You might have uh, one function that puts everything 
into lowercase and removes the white space from the beginning and end of a string. And then you might have something that then takes this and compares it to a database that you have to see if that person with that name exists in your database. And then you might have another thing that then handles pulling that person out of the database and returning their phone number or whatever. So the idea is not just having the inputs and outputs, but then also how they link up and how the information moves between these different functions. So that would be, I would say, the, the next step after you feel like you've gotten a handle on these other areas. But really, if you want an exercise, uh, let's talk about a quick exercise to do. Now, an exercise I would recommend is to take a simple problem in your life. Let's forget about programming for just a second. Let's say um, you need to make yourself a cup of coffee. Now, a good exercise for how to develop your skills as a programmer is to break this down into steps. Okay, I need to get out of my chair, go to the kitchen, make the coffee, and then pour it into a cup and then drink it. Right. Those might be the first steps. And then you want to break it down even further. Okay, what does it mean to go to the kitchen? Well, it means I have to push my chair back, stand up, take 12 steps to the kitchen or however far it is, you know, and you can kind of keep breaking these down. Okay, what does it mean to push the chair back? Well, it means I have to put my hands on the chair sides. It means I have to um, push backwards, you know, you have to think about this. If you can break this down into smaller and smaller steps, so that's one good exercise to do. Uh, then if you go into cooking analogy, you could do the same exercise with cooking. And then you can start thinking about inputs and outputs. Okay, I input um, flour, eggs and milk and I output pancake mix. Then I go to the pan and I input the pancake mix and then I process it, yeah, by cooking it. <laughs> and then I output pancakes. You know, this is, this is a way in which um, you can start training yourself to be thinking in that programmatic way uh, without even looking at code, right? And so then you can also think about how things connect up, right? Maybe when you're cooking a stir fry, you're, you chop the meat on the side and then you've got that there and that's one kind of function but then you also prepare the sauce and that's on the side now this is two separate functions and then they will join up together when you add them into the wok you know that's also about the flow of information how do different functions combine into other functions into other bigger concepts bigger programs so those are some kind of little exercises that you can do at home without touching code that can help you to start developing your thought processes to be more like a programmer. I hope that has been really helpful to you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I am always thrilled to hear from you. Thank you so much. Bye.